Well, the world is getting smaller. There is no doubt about that. These days, if you want to know how much violence has really increased on the streets of Cairo, or how people in Pakistan feel about the country's relationship with the U.S., or about the best new restaurants in New York City, it's easy to pull up Twitter on your computer, your phone, your iPad, and get some answers. So perhaps it's no surprise then, when the U.S. government wanted to get a grasp on the world's reaction to the killing of Osama bin Laden, they sent in a team of people who are referred to by some as, quote, vengeful librarians, whose job it actually is to sift through all this stuff and get some answers. So if you're wondering, they were able to find out that tweets written in Chinese and Urdu, the language of Pakistan, were pretty negative, whereas tweets written in English, even by people who said they were non-President Obama supporters, uh, uh, said it was a great move. Now, the U.S. government is using Twitter and Facebook. This is just one example, but they're using these social media sites to keep their eyes on the U.S. It's a new time we're in, so I think it's something that's worth a conversation. Let's go to radio host Alex Jones in Texas to get his take on all of this. Well, hello there, Alex. Uh, let me ask you something. Isn't the government just doing its job by wanting a better understanding of public opinion? The public, after all, uh, are the people that they're supposed to be serving. Well, the corporate interests that have hijacked the United States, England, and much of Europe um, do want to know what people's concerns are so they can better package propaganda to try to neutralize opposition. But that's not working. Congress has a 9% approval rating, the lowest in history. And so uh, this is all part of a larger spying program so they can gauge mass movements and try to hijack them, try to control them, try to predict uh, mass movements and get ahead of trends. Uh, the ruling class is you know, trying to buck public sentiment uh, and common sense, and so they're using these systems to data mine. But it's not just that. Cable companies sell the surfing habits uh, of their customers. Computer companies have been caught doing the same thing. Uh, this is only the tip of the proverbial iceberg. But, Alex, I mean, if you say that, that they're trying to get ahead of movements and um, really understand things before they happen, why were so many governments, including this one, so surprised about what happened in Egypt, for example? I don't think they were surprised. Uh, they sent in, um, you know, one of the top guys at Google to help run the thing three weeks before it even kicked off. Uh, they sent in uh, whole teams of people. They they knew that when they raised commodity prices to a certain point in countries where half the population makes less than $2 a day uh, and more than half their money is spent on food, that it's going to trigger rebellion. Then they try to steer the rebellion that's already coming. It's kind of like a surf person, a surfer, seeing a big wave coming in and then trying to ride it. Uh, that's basically what these over her, the horizon Google type systems are are basically crystal balls uh, that allow the social engineers uh, to to ride these different waves to fortune. I guess it was just, it's just surprising to me because you know when you watch when you, you think back to you know Tunisia and Egypt and you, you think about the president's reaction, um, the reaction of a lot of higher officials, they seem to not know exactly which way to go. Uh, do we support Mubarak? Do we uh, stand against him? Uh, you know. But let's move on, Alex. I mean, you're on Twitter all the time, and I know you've said in the past you believe you might be someone the CIA would want to keep an eye on. Um, you really think agents right down the road from us here in Washington, you, you think they know your shoe size or, or even care? Well, we know the FBI for 50, 60 years has files even on small-time preachers or anybody who could influence the public. They have files on people that serve the system, uh, and a lot of the stuff that's in the files has turned out to just be gossip and made-up stuff. But I've been approached by federal agents. I've had federal agents visit my office, Secret Service, FBI, uh, ATF, repeatedly. Uh, I've been covering Bilderberg in Virginia and had guys come in and sit down at my table uh, who were obviously, you know, uh, well, they were State Department security forces. They were Marines in plain clothes. But they were both about 45, 50 years old. And say, hey, Alex, let's attack the State Department together. And I looked at him and, and just said, guys, I, I'm, non I'm nonviolent. You know that. And I'm just here to cover Bilderberg. And they're like, we're just checking. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's all a big joke. So I've been followed around. Uh, I've been in urban warfare drills peacefully trying to videotape uh, the, the federal government training, because I had inside sources, 
for martial law, which is now admitted in the different federal acts that are public, uh, you know, like the uh, National Defense Authorization Act. But I mean, a decade ago or more before 9 11, in fact, in 99, I would be in Brooksville, Florida, just trying to film it in the town. And I have it on tape in my film, uh, The Takeover. People walk out of their houses and say, You're Alex Jones. The armies come to my door and said, Don't talk to you, you're crazy. And then that night, I'm trying to film. It's not even a military base, it's a municipal airport. I'm trying to film them doing drills of rounding up citizens and putting them on military transports. And a guy jumps out in plain clothes. Mike Hansen was there. This is, I mean, I have a witness, and starts lighting things on fire, blaming it on me. And I had to basically wrestle the guy and put the fires out. Wow. And then the army all pulls up on dune buggies. The government would frame a U.S. citizen like that. I, I've experienced it. So it's not that I think the government spies on me. Uh, it's admitted that they do, and they spy on everybody, and it's illegal. Alex, you mentioned the National Defense Authorization Act, and I do want to talk about that in just a second. But just regarding Twitter and the fact, I mean, I use this example of, um, you know, them sifting through all these Twitter responses to find out the public's reaction to the killing of Osama bin Laden. But it, it seems to me that there's a, there's a whole department in the CIA whose job it is simply to just read tweets that people write. A lot of times people say, you know what, I'm putting my information out there. I know it's public. Um, the government can read it if they want because I have nothing to hide. What do you have to say to people like this? I mean, is there a broader concern? Well, there is because this is just one aspect of it, of public data mining where people go put their personal stuff on Twitter or Facebook and average criminals rob them. I mean, this is an issue not just with government. And you know, as you said, government is trying to gauge what people thought of the bin Laden story that from the research we've done was as phony as a three dollar bill I mean burying him at sea and 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 he do he wasn't in a firefight and the helicopter blows up and then the rest of the seals who were in on the raid their helicopter blows up later I mean I've talked speaking of CIA I've talked to high-level people in the CIA who are currently in there saying that bin Laden died many years ago of kidney failure I've talked to former State Department officials who who have said the same thing? So so it's not just gauging the response to Bin Laden being killed. They were gauging if the public was buying the ridiculous Aesop's fable, or is the is, is the Keebler elf real? Is the Easter Bunny real? Is Santa Claus is real? But you notice in these terms, they have drill in there, and they have the word illegal alien. They they're monitoring folks that don't want wide open borders and aren't traders. They're monitoring people that are aware that government corporations use drills to cover up real false flag terror attacks or frame ups that they're going to run. And time and time again, since we've discovered that 9/11 had drills of the same targets being hit, 7/7 in London had drills of the same targets being hit. They do this drill business over and over and over again to cover real operations. Same thing with the Norway shooter. And so they're wanting to know what we know about their drills. Well, you talk about monitoring, and, and that, of course, brings to mind, for me at least, the Patriot Act. I mean, how, how much things have changed since 9-11. Um, the government really putting into writing these laws that give them permission, legally, to monitor people. Um, you mentioned this before, and I want to talk about it, the National Defense Authorization Act. This was passed by both houses of Congress. Um, and I know you had Congressman Ron Paul on your show recently. Ron Paul, of course, running for president has a pretty amazing following in some parts of the country. And I want to just play a little bit of what he told you on your show about the NDAA and then talk about it. This is a giant step. This should be the biggest news going right now. It's literally uh, legalizing martial law. This step where they can literally arrest American people, uh, American citizens, and put them away without a trial. And, and you heard Lindsey Graham say, well, if they ask for a lawyer, tell them no lawyer for you. I mean, that is arrogant and bold and dangerous. Uh, let's hope and pray that we can get that kind of stuff reversed. So, Ron Paul, I mean, such an interesting candidate. I know you've talked about him at length. We've talked about him at length. He is somebody that I, I would suggest really is offering change, whether you like it or not. He is offering big change, much bigger, I would argue, than President Obama. Talk a little bit about um, his stance on things like the Patriot Act and the NDAA and how you think that that bears for him in, you know, th this candidacy, this GOP nomination. Well, uh, 
again, thanks for having me on, and thanks for having the courage to cover these real issues. I really appreciate that uh, from you, Christine, and and uh, uh, RT as well. Look, Ron Paul for 30 years has warned about this slow slide towards despotism, towards classical tyranny. Every society that goes in this direction ends up in the same place. And we're now following that path. And if you read the NDAA, it says the military can operate domestically. That had previously been illegal. I mean, that's like North Korea or Mexico or something It has the military on the streets. And it says citizens can just disappear into a black hole. I mean, not even, not even the, the darkest times of Stalin uh, did they actually put it on paper that you could disappear into a black hole? They just did it. In the darkest times of Hitler, they didn't just, uh, y y you know, put it on paper. They just secretly did it. Same thing in every other authoritarian regime. They're actually putting this on paper and then admitting that it's for U.S. citizens. And, and yeah, 10 years ago, you talk about warrantless wiretapping. People, oh, that's not happening. Now, oh, of course it is. And if you get the internal training manuals, uh, from the police and military that we've been sent and published, it's all about conservatives, libertarians, gun owners, rural groups. This is not even about the, quote, Muslim extremist threat that we were sold on. This is about clamping down on domestic groups that don't want to be part of this corporate-run imperial empire. And Ron Paul is, is, is not extreme. He's a real American. He's what George Washington stood for. He's what real freedom is all about, a constitutionalist. That's why America 80 years ago, 50 years ago, was loved and respected. Now it's seen as a country that tortures, secret arrest. America's no longer this light of liberty. Now it's seen as a pusher of tyranny and corruption and oppression. And Ron Paul's being attacked by the Republican and Democratic leadership because he offers real changes, you said, to the status quo, which is classical despotism yeah, growing think, like a cancer. I think it is in an interesting point that, that certainly a lot of things that were seen as just crazy ideas before are sort of slowly being worked into uh, our sense of reality. Radio host Alex Jones, as always, great to have you. Uh, thanks so much. Thanks for having me.